Hey y'all, let's talk banjo bends. Everybody loves banjo bendy licks like this. Let's talk about how to do those and a little bit of theory behind that. Whenever we play any note on our second string and we play the third string two frets higher, those are always one whole step apart. Which means that we can pretty easily bend that lower note up a whole step to match the note that we're fretting on our second string. So this is, for instance, a D note. Two frets higher on the string higher is a C note. So we can bend it up to match the note that we're playing on our second string. This takes a little practice, a little bit of strength. And I do advise that you use your middle finger behind that ring finger to help give you a little bit of strength. So just practice doing that. Practice making the notes match. Not overshooting it, not undershooting it, but get them to be the second, same note. Now what makes these bendy notes cool, or bendy licks cool, is that we play the string, in this instance, that G string, the third string, before we do the bend. And whenever we do that, we get the full effect of the bend. If we try to play the string and, or bend the string and play it at the same time, you miss some of that bend. So let me show you how to do this particular lick. Which is pretty cool. It works great as a backup or as a solo lick. So again, index finger on the third fret, ring finger on the fifth fret of the G string. Put our middle finger down on the fifth, on the fourth behind it. And then I'm going to play them back and forth together, bending that fifth fret up each time. Try it again. And after you do it the second time, leave it up. And this time we're gonna play it while it's bent and then bend it back down, release the bend. And then I'm going to do a little bit of single string picking, play the third fret on the G string, and then come down to the fifth fret on the low string. Now this is a G lick, so it'd work great if we're playing over a G chord. And this also is transferable, of course, so we can make that be whatever lick that we want it to be. If we're in the key of G and we have a chord progression that's going G, C, D, we could play some backup on a really bluesy song using this lick, it sound great. If we wanted to jump it to C, to play over the C chord, how would we do that? Come up to where our ring finger is on the 10th fret. That's your C chord, right? And then do the same lick. If we wanted the D chord, come up two more frets. And then if we wanted to finish it out, we could go all the way up to the 17th. That's 12 frets or an octave above where we started and get another G. So when you put all those together, it sounds like this. Pretty cool, huh? Take that, learn it, practice it, enjoy it. Get to working on those bends. Try to, try to be accurate with them. Gain some bendy strength in your fingers. And uh, let me know how you're working it into your playing.